Now, let's go over the three-way handshake mechanism. When a server and a client communicate by TCP IP, a data packet is sent by one and then acknowledged by the other. Now, both sides keep note of which packets have been sent and received via sequence numbers in the headers of each packet. Now, in order to start a conversation, they must first synchronize their sequence numbers with each other, which leads to the three-way handshake. Now, the client will first send a send packet to synchronize the client's sequence number. The server will respond with a SYNAC, synchronizing its sequence number with the client and, of course, acknowledging the sequence number of the client. Finally, the client will respond with an acknowledgement of the server's sequence number. Okay, so now that we understand that, we now know that both sides of the conversation have the other's sequence number, and therefore a TCP conversation can commence and lost packets will be spotted. So let's go over how this, how NMAP carries out port scanning using this protocol. First, NMAP starts by attempting a TCP packet, attempting to send a TCP packet with the SYN flag set to port 22. Now, as we told you, this is the first step in the TCP three-way handshake that any legitimate connection attempt takes. Since the target port is open, the server takes the second step by sending a response with the SYNAC flag and it sends it back. Any normal connection. The client machine would complete the three-way handshake by sending an ACK packet acknowledging the SYNAC. Now, NMAP does not need to do this since the SYNAC response already told it that the port is open. If NMAP completes the connection by sending an ACK, it would then have to worry about closing it. Now, this usually involves another handshake using a FIN packets rather than SYN. So an ACK is not a choice, but rather something that has to be done. Now, can the NMAP ignore it by not sending ACK to the server? That does not help because the server will assume that the request was dropped and will keep resending it. Now we don't want to make a proper connection as the proper response is an RST packet. This tells the server to forget about the attempted connection. Nmap could send this RST packet easily enough, but it actually doesn't need to. The operating system running on the client also receives SYNAC, which it doesn't expect because Nmap crafted the SYN probe itself. So the OS responds to the unexpected SYNAC with an uh, or a RST packet. All RST packets also have the ACK built set because they are always sent a response to and acknowledge a received packet. So that bit is not shown explicitly for RST packets. Because the three-way handshake is never completed, SYN scanning is sometimes called a half-open scanning. And we will cover this a bit later. Let's now talk briefly about TCP flags. Okay, now that you understand the process of a three-way handshake and how NMAP does a, a port scan, let's briefly explain the various TCP flags, okay? The TCP header contains several one-bit uh, Boolean fields known as flags, and these are used to influence the flow of data across the TCP connection. Apart from the CWR and ACE flags added for congestion notification by RFC 3168, there are six TCP controlled flags. And these are used to control the establishment, uh, the, the maintenance, and the teardown of a TCP connection. Now, these are used fairly, or uh, and they're, they're usually familiar to anyone who has performed even basic packet analysis. The RST flag. Uh, will be used to instantly close a TCP conversation. It can indicate that a port is open, but the corresponding service is not running. Mm -hmm. uh, the port scanner NMAP uses this when testing what ports are filtered. Yes, and the push or PSH 
uh, flag ensures that the data is giving the priority and it's processed at the sending or receiving end. Now, this particular flag is used quite frequently at the beginning and end of a data transfer, affecting the way the data is handled at both ends. Okay. Now, URG flag is used to identify incoming data as urgent. Segments with URG flag set as one will be processed on high priority, and the remote machine will process this segment by stopping the processing of other segments. That's right, Laura. Now let's conclude the topic on the uh, TCP flags by mentioning about the remaining three that are, again, the most commonly used ones. So we have SYN flag, and this is used to indicate a connection. We have the ACT flag, or acknowledgement received data flag, which acknowledges the data received. And then the FIN flag is used really to close the connection. Now, Engage Packet Builder is a scriptable packet builder for Windows. It can be downloaded from the www.engagesecurity.com for free. Let's talk about Vanilla, one of the port scanning methods. A TCP Connect port scan is essentially a full three-way handshake followed by an RSD packet to close the conversation. If the port is open and a service is listening, then this will proceed as normal. If the port is closed, then an RSD packet will be returned to the attacking machine's initial SYN. Now, this is created by a TCP Connect system call, and it will be identified instantaneously if the port is open or closed. Uh, making separate Connect calls for every targeted port in a linear fashion would take a long time over a slow connection. Now, there is another way attackers circumvent this problem. They use many sockets in parallel to accelerate the scan. Now you can set a low timeout period to watch the sockets simultaneously. And you can do this by using non-blocking. Uh, you can continue this really until the maximum port threshold is then reached. What happens if a connection has not been established? If the connection is not established, then the scanned machine would have potentially been attached by a denial of service attack. This allows you to make a new socket to be created or called. It confirms you with an open port to be scanned for a running service. Now, the advantage of this, or the advantage of this scan, is that it does not require administrative privileges. Let me tell you why. The raw packet properties are not being manipulated. What then is a disadvantage? Here, a full TCP connection is being established and then reset. The target machine is possibly an IDS service or an IDS device in between, and it will usually write an error to its logs. When this happens across a range of ports, it makes it, or it makes it fairly obvious to any system administrator that looks that they have been port scanned. And do you think they're not going to do any, anything and sit quietly? They will not, definitely not. They will initiate countermeasures. Now throughout this module so far, we have been referring to the Nmap tool. Nmap, as you know, is a free open source port scanner available for both Unix and Windows platforms. It has an optional graphical front end, Nmap FE, and it supports a wide variety of scan types, each one with really different benefits and drawbacks. It can also be used for network exploration and security auditing. NetMap's potential can be leveraged fully for large-scale networks for a rapid scan, but can be used against single hosts as well. NetMap uses raw IP packets to identify the following. The hosts on the network, the services an application is giving, the name and version, operating system and its version, packet filters, and firewalls being used. And you can use an Nmap to identify many, many more characteristics. That's right. And Nmap is used for various purposes. For example, security audits. Administrators use it to carry out day-to-day -day tasks, and it can also be used to get network inventory, manage uh, service upgrade schedules, monitor host or service uptime, and a host of other purposes. That's right. Okay, let's go over some of the types of scans that are available. 
there are in fact two of them that are used most. They are TCP Connect scanning and SYN scanning. Now, SYN scanning is also known as half open or stealth scanning. Now we'll see why it's called this a little bit later. A TCP connection will be established with a remote host if the system call connect succeeds. You may not be able to establish a connection if the remote system is offline, if the port is closed or some other error occurred along the way. Now this method of connect or connect calls allows a basic type of port scan which attempts to connect to every port in turn and notes whether or not the connection succeeded. Now you will then be able to collate statistics on open and closed ports to decide on the next course of action. You uh, can do this as you are clear about ports that are open and those that are closed. The only disadvantage is that the scan could get identified easily. With the kind of firewalls and IDS that are in place, it is very easy to identify when a scan of a port happens. Any attempt to connect to a blocked or not specifically open port can easily be identified and logged. You can even log the source TCP IP. To circumvent this problem, the TCP stealth scan was developed.